Hello, this is Brad. We're going to be taking a short flight today from Cleveland to Fort Wayne, Indiana. Kilo Charlie Lima Echo to Kilo Foxtrot Whiskey Alpha. We're going to be flying the latest version, 1.3, of X Aviation's Saab 340A. One of the purposes of this video today is to show some flight planning using skyvector.com, which most of you are familiar with. And then a little tool that I wrote that will convert these flight plans that you can find at flightaware.com, skyvector.com, and RootFinder, and convert them into .fms files that can be loaded into the Garmin 430, 530, or even the default FMS that comes with X-Plane. So let's head on over to skyvector.com to begin our planning. So here we are in skyvector.com. I have put in the departure airport and destination airport, an approximate speed and flight level, and it's drawn a nice pink line, which we are not going to follow. Now, a bit of a caveat here. I am making this flight and planning this flight devoid of any ATC. So I will assume that they will clear my flight plan as filed and take us from origin to destination without any vectors or deviations. Again, that's just an assumption that we have to make without ATC. Before I start putting in waypoints, I need to determine which direction I'm going to be taking off towards and landing. So I'm going to just check the weather, the winds in particular, and here I see winds out of the northeast at 70 degrees, and over in Fort Wayne, they are still out of the northeast at 50 degrees. So we'll be taking off and landing to the northeast if at all possible. I'd also like to check my airport diagram and to see if there are any stars or SIDs that I need to take into account. So I head over to flightplan.com. I've got my airport here and I'm going to go ahead and submit that. And I do have some departures here. Now I have cheated and Instead of boring you with, by looking through all of them, we're going to be using the Oberlin 4. And I'll show you that in just a minute. And also we're going to look at the airport diagram. If we go back and take a look at what Fort Wayne has to offer. Now Fort Wayne has no star, so I'm going to be relying on the Garmin 530 pulling up data from Navigraph to give us a procedure and an approach into runway 5. I have offloaded the PDFs from flightplan.com and pulled them up in Acrobat. We'll start with the airport diagram at Cleveland and it looks like we'll be taking off from runway 10. And then we'll take a look at our SID the reason that I'm going to look at this SID is just to make note of some waypoints that I may want to consider when I start plotting my flight. Here is the airport diagram for Fort Wayne. We're going to be landing on runway 5. So what does that instrument approach look like? I'm going to be looking for a procedure that uses an initial approach fix at Chimley. Then I will intercept the localizer somewhere in this area and then finally pick up the glide slope at Hoons. Now I have taken the liberty of pulling up page 2 of the Oberlin SID to see if there are any instructions that might be helpful and uh, one of the things that you do look for would be an initial altitude. So take off runways 10, climb on assigned heading to 5,000 feet. 
I'm also looking for a transition. The one they give for Fort Wayne is for use by Fort Wayne arrivals only. And it'll be interesting to see if the Garmin actually has me fly to this VOR, which happens to be right on the field. But anyway, I don't see any other instructions here um, that would be apropos to our flight today. So here is our SID again, and I'm going to take a few minutes and just type up a list that I can have off to the side of these particular waypoints. All right, back to skyvector.com. I've got my list of waypoints on my SID listed over here just for handy reference. Now this is a VFR chart. I'm planning an instrument flight. So I will switch over to our en route chart low. And this will give us our waypoints uh, at our altitude or close to our altitude. So I'm just going to go ahead and begin typing these in. We'll be fine first to dryer, which is right here. So after we take off, we'll make a right turn and head towards dryer. Our next one is Bruntz. And then Oberlin, the namesake of our SID. So we're headed a little bit southwest, finally to Flag City, VOR. So that gets us about three quarters or two thirds of the way to Fort Wayne. We are probably going to be coming around, here's Chimley, so we'll be coming south. So I'm going to look for waypoints that will take me south. And it's, at this point it's kind of arbitrary, so I'll pick Osper and add it to my plan. There's probably no need to have one in between. I don't really see one that's handy. I'll add one before Chimley. Wagner. So probably at this point I'll be selecting an approach on the Garmin. So what do I do with all these waypoints? Well, I click this little button here that says nav log. And I get this wonderful table that shows me all of my waypoints and coordinates. Now I need to select these coordinates so that I can plug them into this little conversion program that I wrote. Unfortunately, in Safari, you have to save it out and pull it into Acrobat in order to get those points selected. Okay, here's my Sky Vector nav log pulled into Acrobat. So I just start with my cursor and drag straight down, basically. I don't want anything but the waypoint names and the coordinates all the way through this minute sign. On my Mac, it's Command-C to copy it to my clipboard, and then we head over to my flight plan converter. So you will find this flight plan converter at xplanetools.com. A little disclaimer, this has absolutely nothing to do with X-Plane itself or laminar research. So it's very simple at this point. I can go ahead and put in the name that will identify this once I get in the airplane and I'm loading this into the Garmin. So I might as well use the name of the origin and destination airports. So after I get my name in, I'll go ahead and paste in what I copied from the nav log and I select sky vector here and I click convert and it gives me my .fms file here and I want to copy this over to or download it to my output directory in xplane. 
this is what it looks like. So I'll go ahead and I will right click, download linked file as. I have my explain on a solid state drive for obvious reasons. Output, FMS plans, and I'll go ahead and save it. Now, one thing about working at Safari, and I guess all this is a good reason to work in Chrome, is that we'll add an extension of .txt. So if I go over and look at the flight plan I just saved, notice it's put the text extension on there. I don't know why it does. All this is a good reason just to stick with Chrome. So that completes the flight planning portion of this video and next we'll head over to the plane and get things rolling there. So here we are back at the aircraft. I have auxiliary power so that we can program our Garmin 530. Climb inside here. And here's our 530. I'll just pop it up here. So when I pull it up here, I have my navigational display. What I really need is my flight plan or a list of waypoints. This happens to be from the flight just before this one. So we'll clear it out when we load the new one. So I click on this inner knob and it pulls up a list of all of my recorded .fms files. And I just need to go down to the one we just set up for Cleveland to Fort Wayne. Click enter. And if I go back to the flight plan, you can see that it has loaded all of the waypoints. Now I don't really need the first one, so I'm going to select it and clear it. Then I click the direct button and I activate it and now we are all set for that first waypoint after takeoff you can see that we have our bearings and our distances all ready to go so now it's a matter of starting the engines and taking off